BMW of Atlantic City, just off the parkway next to the Home Depot in Egg Harbor Township, and online at BMWAtlanticCity.com. For a dealership experience you'll remember, get to BMW of Atlantic City, closer than you think. Find exceptional offers through BMW Financial Services. Hey, it's Jeff Mosher from the Sports Bash. I signed up at PlaySugarHouse.com. It was quick and easy. I put my info in. took just a couple of minutes. When I signed up, I was offered a match code for 100% up to $250 for first-time depositors. Your account has the bonus bank, which you can see the bonus money you have available, and you can control how much of your bonus money you want to use at any time. I used the bonus code 250MATCH. That's 250MATCH. So as to get my 100% first deposit match bonus, it immediately showed up in my bonus bank. Now to earn some real cash. you have any problem, please call one Gambler. Thirty four in about three seconds will be eleven thirty five. Ding 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 eleven thirty five ninety seven three ESPN. <laughs> Scooter McKay in the house. We got our, our Eagles bet is all set. Yep. The Patriots are gonna lose. Eagles okay. gonna win this game. And I'll, of course we'll be on tomorrow with a pregame, uh pre pregame show leading up to we on from ten to one, taking off the Tony Bruno countdown to kickoff, and then the Eagles broadcast. So we got another three hours tomorrow. We'll be here with uh, Bill Beverly being in the studio. And, of course, Hunter Brody will be with me. We have a great mystery guest tomorrow, Eagles mystery guest. We're we'll talking with Scott Grayson and, of course, the fantasy football guru, Brian Hartley. That's all tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 1 on 97.3 ESPN. But right now, Scooter, let's talk a little Flyers hockey because I thought last night, well, first of all, this Flyers team's been red hot. And it started back when they started with Montreal and they beat Toronto and they beat uh, uh, Boston. Boston in overtime. They, they Washington. They, they uh, even though they they got a point. Yep. So they've been they've yep. been scoring points and against pretty good teams. Some pretty good, te- real really good, good teams. Real good teams. Yep. So we wanted to talk to some of those a lot about uh, about the Flyers. So let's go to the, to the sports hotline and welcome in uh, to the locker room, Bill Meltzer. What's up, Bill? Hey guys, how you doing? Of course, Bill, you write for. Uh, the uh, uh, flyers.nhl.com. You can read all your your, uh, your your stuff there. You do a great job covering. We got a chance to see you. Scotty and I got a chance to come talk to you down at practice a couple weeks ago. And a uh, r- real nice stretch of hockey. I was a little disappointed last night. I thought the, the Flyers had the opportunity to win the game, especially when Claude Giroux drew that four minute penalty with what, 417 to go. I thought for, I felt really good that this team was going to score, at least tie it up. And uh, and take it into overtime, but it was not to be. Yeah, well, last night, other than really, other than about the first seven eight minutes of the game, it really you know the Flyers Flyers were kind of flat last night. You know, it, it's uh, kind of like, last night's game was one of those trap game scenarios, and that's not to take anything away from Ottawa. I mean, Ottawa had come in winning six of their last ten, now seven of eleven. So there are they are an improved team, but I mean, truthfully, last night was a winnable game um, for the Flyers. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, I mean, those, those things happen from time, time to time, but, but given the run that the team had been on, all the quality teams that they've beaten, and really a very tough challenge coming tonight against the Islanders, it would have been really nice for the Flyers to come away. You know, certainly with one, but really, last night was winnable. You go, going in, that's a game they probably should have won. Now they got to get right back on the horse. You can't, can't lose back-to-back. Bill, this team has been fun to watch. I mean, the last four games has been very entertaining. It's been getting timely scoring. and getting some great hits. And Elaine Vigneault, he's got this team playing playing inspired hockey. Yeah, they, they really have been. You know, I, I mean, I think the number one area you've seen improvement in is uh, the goals against average is way down. Now, obviously, you know, obviously the goaltending itself is, is a huge piece of that because Carter Hart has been tremendous and Brian Elliott has played quite well, too. But I mean, the whole team is buying into playing that 200-foot game. They've had a, you know, they've had a lot of games in here where, where they've really kind of controlled the territorial play. So as much as the, as much as the outcomes have been, you know, have been encouraging. You know, like that Boston game, the Flyers held the Bruins to 10 shots through two periods, and then I thought their legs got a little heavy in the third period. The Flyers are playing for the fourth time in six nights, so that can happen. And then Carter Hart carried them the rest of the way, right? And then. And you know, they play the Capitals. Um, got phenomenal goaltending. One of the best games of Carter Hart's career. And 
you know, come back and get a point from that. I mean, that's a, you know, that, that, that bodes well for the team moving ahead here. Once they get through the, the stretch of 16 games in 30 days in November, that's uh, that's tough for any team, but if they can keep doing what they've been doing, they should be just fine. We're talking with Bill Meltzer from the flyers.nhl.com and, and uh, Scotty McKay's in here. We were talking about uh, on the way into the show today, how this, uh, this Vigneault is really juggling the lines yesterday, last night to uh, keep the keep the uh, keep them fresh to keep them on their toes. Yeah, he's done. He's done actually a, a couple games in a row here. The only the Sean Couturier line has has uh, stayed in ta- fully intact, and every other the other three lines have all been moved around. Um, last night they really relied heavily on the Couturier line in the third period because you're trailing by a goal and they didn't have much else going. Um, that's something else to, to track for tonight against the Islanders. But what I really liked last weekend when they played Toronto, they were able to, to roll all four lines. And I think that carried over into the Boston game, kept the whole team a little bit fresher. And I, I mean, honestly, he, I, I think Vino, he'll give, he'll give lines like a, a period or so to, to see what they can do. Um, yeah, even if you're not scoring, if you're creating, creating scoring chances, if you're, you know, if you're not getting hemmed in your own end of the ice, I think he's more inclined to stay with them for a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, he, he moved a lot of personnel around the last two games. And, I mean, that can be good or that can be bad. Uh, sometimes it takes a little time to get a little chemistry going on the line. It doesn't click right away. Uh, on the flip side, it does, it does keep guys on their toes. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes when you move things around, throw a different look at a team, and it can work. I mean, it, it worked, uh, you know, it worked in, the, uh, in the Washington game. I thought the Flyers really came on in that third period. And uh, – so, I mean, I, I think Vino and his staff have done a tremendous job, the assistants as well. Uh, if you look at, you know, where the special teams have been, uh, last night, of course, they had the big opportunity in the third period in the power play that they didn't take advantage of. But, I mean, they're over 20% on the power play. That's a nice, that's a nice bump from last season. And the penalty kill, though they gave up one last night, uh, the penalty kill has been outstanding so far as your top five in the league. Yeah, Billy, it's Scotty. Um, we, you, took, you just probably answered most of my first thoughts I had on here that, I like, you know, being a coach myself, I like the fact that Elaine Vino is not afraid to juggle the lines and move them around. I mean, obviously you you want to give these guys times to gel and get together, but in the other sense is, listen, if it's not working, it's not working. Let's move it around. And, you know, who do you give the credit for? Do you give, do you think, how much does Fletcher have involved with this? Is he giving, you know, Vino the, the reins to say, hey, do what you want and let's hope it works? Or do you think, those guys are talking a lot together and saying, hey, listen, these combinations are going to be good, and, you know, uh, let, let's push this a little bit harder. Yeah, I, I think it's actually funny. It's something that, something that Chris Terrian and I had discussed at, at length. Um, on the, the Flyers' website, there's a, there's a weekly article called uh, Terrian's Take, and actually Chris and I kind of talk out the topics. And one of the things we talked nice about was – plug, by the way. That. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, but, I mean, one of the things that, that – you know, Bundy was saying was that when you have a, a brand new coach, particularly a guy with Vino's track record and, and uh, you know, and his pedigree as an NHL coach, usually for at least a year, the guy gets pretty much carte blanche to do whatever he wants. Um, you know, and, and really the, it's up to the players to fall in line with that. It, it's really, uh, you know, I, I think that, I think that's the case. I think Chuck gave him the personnel and then gave, uh, given Vino and the coaching staff a lot of leeway to, kind of shape things how they see fit and you know i mean i i credit where it's due so far it seems to be working well you know the good thing too is he's he's not afraid to send guys down and bring other guys up if they're not you know he, he kind of benched the other night he, he benched farabee the other night for a little while and even farabee came out and said you know if I, if I was a coach i would have benched myself too but um and he's sending guys down he's bringing guys up and saying listen if you don't perform while you're up here you know, go back down to the Phantoms, you know, get your legs back and let's go. So it is keeping the guys on their toes and it's making them say, you know, when I get the opportunity, I better get my stuff together here quick. Oh, for, yeah, for sure. And, and I mean, you know, they, and they were kept experimenting with things. So they found some things that worked. They brought up Andy Andrew off a veteran guy from, from the Phantoms. And that's uh, so far he's been, he's worked out really well on the, uh, on the fourth line. And incidentally, one, you know, one, when he's moved personnel around, move guys down the lineup, he hasn't been afraid to move veterans down. Right. Um, you know, Voracek has moved down at times. James Van Riemsdyk has moved down at times. Last night, Voracek's first shift of the second period was seven minutes in. That was a power play. Um, you know, sometimes sometimes it takes a little gumption from a coach to to take guys who've been core guys in the team have been t- you know 
have been your top line guys and move them that de- move them down if it's not working. I mean that you know if you hold those guys accountable, then then really you know t- the whole team takes notice because I mean nobody you know nobody is above above coaching and potentially moving down if they're not delivering. And I think that's I think that's a really good message. It's a, it's a great message. And Voracek might need that message more than some of the other guys. We're talking with Bill Meltzer from uh, Flyers.NHL.com, and let's play this game with. Uh, Let's play the game with Billy. We ask him if, a couple of the players, and Bill, you're going to say, under, "I'm going to say, I'm going to give you a player's name. You're going to tell me if they underachieved, uh, overachieved, or, or, or what you or expected." As expected okay. Right. Kevin Hayes. He's underachieved so far. Uh, you know, with the with the salary that he's on, um, you don't need just a defensive center. You need some production as well. He's pressing a little bit right now, so I would say underachieved so far. Jacob Voracek. Um, that he, Jake is underachieved. Uh, not just not just points wise. I think you would like to see him creating and, and getting more scoring chances. The points are okay, but uh, he can play a lot better. Ivan Provorov. Provorov has had a you know a, a, a little bit of up and down, but I mean I, I think all in all he plays the toughest matchups. He plays the most minutes. The game against Washington, I thought was his best game of the season. Uh, I would say about what's expected. So as expected. Okay. Yeah. Um, Travis Konechny. Uh konechny has been off to an unbelievable start. Now he's got a couple games in a row here without a point, but he's continuing to create chances, using his speed effectively. Um, you know, other aspects of his game are, are maturing as well, I would say, exceeds. Claude Giroux. Yeah, no, that's, it's funny. I mean, the numbers aren't there um, where, where they should be. Um, you know, he's moved back to center again. I, I think some people would say underachieved. I would say about what what's expected, and I expect the points will increase. All right, I don't want to go Carter through Carter Hart. Well, okay, Carter Hart. Well, let's do one more. Uh, Carter Hart, I would say that, uh, I mean, I'm very high on Carter Hart, and I, I think he is a, you know, a, a budding franchise goalie. He hit a little bit of a, a rough bell in October, but, you know, I wouldn't say exceeds. I would say, I would say he's done about what's expected. As expected. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, uh, my prediction in the beginning of the season, Bill, was I didn't think this team was going to make the playoffs. But a- after watching the first, you know, the first uh, 16 games, how many games no. they played? Uh, almost 20 six, games. Uh, seven, almost the first, I think, yeah. uh, after seeing the first 19 games, I'm very impressed with this team, uh, even though some of the guys like Hayes and Voracek and Couturier really haven't been playing as, or, you know, up to expect expectations. I still – I don't know. I, I'm pretty pumped about this team. How about you, Scooter? Yeah, I, I didn't have super high expectations right off the bat because, um, you know, for years the Flyers were a team that kind of held their youth back, you know, and, may, and maybe Hextall's in L.A. because he did hold some youth back at times and, and wanted them developed. Um, but uh, they, they've kind of let these young guys come in and they've performed. As far, you know, as far as if we had talked about Farabee, I would say he's overachieved big time, you know, at being a 19-year-old kid coming in this league. So, um, I think they're gonna. It's gonna be a tough time making the playoffs, but I think they're gonna make a run towards the end of the season, and they'll give it a good shot. For Bill says, I hope they do. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, no, I, I, I think that I think this team will be will be right there in the mix to make the playoffs. I mean, last last year I thought it was gonna be a playoff team coming off a ninety eight point season the year before. They took a big step backwards last season. I I actually do like the guys they added. Um, Niskanen has been been huge for the team. I think, you know, I, I don't think the Flyers are a cup contender at this point, but I do think it's a playoff team. So, you know, now they have to con- they have to continue to, you know, play up to the levels they have so far, which would be about a 100-point pace, and that would be a playoff team. All right, Billy, listen, man, we really appreciate you taking time out on a Saturday. I know you'll be down at the game tonight. We really look forward to reading your articles on the uh, the flyers.nhl.com, and thanks a lot for checking in with us. Uh, my pleasure. Anytime. All right, All right there's Bill. Billy hey, Meltzer of the Flyers and. uh Hey man, he's, he writes great articles, and um, he's in the heart of it, man. He, right he kind of sees what's going on. He's, he's there every day, day in, yeah. day out.